what are the main ideas here when it comes to um, the composition? Then? Collecting problems. Okay, so which problems don't you like here? At the moment I like all my problems. I, I began to love them. <laughs> <laughs> like the bomb. <laughs> Kubrick. <sighs> now, I tried to t um, reconstruct uh, the Renaissance methods of uh, organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, not a mural, but a painting on the wall, a flat painting. And in the old times, you would have had the uh, format turned 90 degrees. So this is a modernist approach. The landscape or the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything. It's yeah. a modernist approach to see it like that. Mm. Doesn't fit over your sofa uh, anymore, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and after I studied uh, Raphael and uh, Caravaggio and Vermeer, Vermeer is an Italian painter, I think. <laughs> um, I saw that they tried to fit a five angle into the four principle. So the first thing I do usually is to find my 72 degrees uh, in the angle. 72 times 5 is 360. So I make this here. Here's a I had my lines drawn in the beginning, but they are overpainted now. Yeah. But I try okay. to keep uh, the structure. So here in the corner, yeah. you'll see different lines here. And my 72 uh, degrees go about this way. Okay. Then you have the point here, which makes an Asymmetrical uh, pyramid. Right, okay. Uh, here. Yeah. And this you can do the other way round. Right, okay, so you have, you have the inverted. So um, yeah. Symmetry is a very big problem because symmetry uh, is a sign for uh, schizophrenia. <laughs> yeah. There uh, 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 the, the, the are. Uh, uh, scientific papers about mm. this. Mm. Uh, it's not my invention. Right. Yeah. S a symmetry is a problem. Mm. Yeah. And this I can develop further. You saw the line about up here. Yeah. Which correlates with her legs. Right. So I try to develop a horizon here. A horizon here, a horizon here, and for this I had to turn up all the landscape. Yeah, yeah, it, because it's because going almost going Normally, upwards. the horizon would be about here, yeah. the main horizon, but then it cuts all the painting, yeah. and you see the gods from underneath, but they are human, humanistic yeah. gods. Not the one who is ruling all the money in the world. <laughs> and you know what to do in a Christian world. You have to pay. Yeah, yeah. So God is on your side. <laughs> uh, no, these, these are really humanistic gods. Yeah. And they try to get the, uh, the female with them. But it's very difficult. She looks in another direction. Yeah. She looks out into the sea. And the man recognizes his fellow mates, the gods. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and three uh, stands for uh, making children. So they are three, like the angels in, in the New Testament. Uh, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, that is in such an episode. They are coming to give them human identity and children. How does three represent having children? 
it's uh, it's an old tradition hmm. so old that i didn't find any source but hmm. three times three is nine which is the nine months of pregnancy right right but the, the main energy i mean so you have the this. main energy is his ass yeah yeah <laughs> so it yeah. it should be something for men and women so uh, <laughs> it's it's important to have this 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 of course and the togetherness yeah all of this all the hands yeah i know that some hats are too big or something yeah. has to be done but now it's good and and you can start uh, chiseling it out and yeah, working no. with it and all this. It's, it's yeah. way too much contrast uh, on the, in the wrong parts. Uh, so yeah, and you uh, have very busy, busy mountains busy. behave like people and uh, the other way around. <laughs> I yeah. know all of this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about values. Values. Some people talk about these shades of gray. It's a, 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 a sick term. Uh, but that sounds kind of counterintuitive because obviously you have obviously you have different values that you're working with. So what are you saying? No, the shades of grey. Yeah. Voleur. Mm -hmm. In French. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Voleur. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not about this. It's about something completely different. And what it's about uh, it's about togetherness and lines and. Uh, Rhythm. You see, our, our, our great hero and friend, uh, Mr. Nadrum, uh, 20 years ago, I sat together with, with uh, one of his former students and we saw the perfection in his work. But the only thing uh, we missed was uh, the contact in between the human beings. Right. Yeah. This was exactly the point why he began to develop this. The individuals became groups. Became one organism. Loving. Yeah, one organism. So uh, I think this is the most important thing. You can make wonderful details and, and uh, sort out uh, a person there, a person there, and will become fine or a single portrait. And then when you have everything in dark and the hand is sticking out and some little bit of the face, it will work. But it will not tell you anything uh, of importance. If you don't have the contact. Yeah. Yeah. So make yeah. contact in between the individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make them a group. It does make them individuals in interaction. Mm -hmm. Like in a good play. <laughs> oh, no, so it's you're, you're a collectivist because you paint people together. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Even the one God in three persons. Yeah. There are three individuals hmm. with uh, different uh, approaches to divinity. Yeah. Very important for me is uh, that uh, landscape is not a separate thing. Exactly. Yes. Because yes. I'm maybe one of those few who are one with the landscape. Well, uh, I'm going on tour uh, and experience mountains uh, or the coast. Yeah. So I'm one with this landscape. Mm. But this, you, this is pure invention it's based complete on... complete fantasy, but yeah. it's uh, experienced fantasy. Exactly, yeah. It's uh, yeah. like uh, you loved someone and uh, remember how it was in the best moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I could say about every part here that I experienced this part of mountain or where it was, and I drew them together. This yeah. is why I went to north to the north of Norway yeah. and was stuck in uh, into landscape painting because I wanted to be in a holy land. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah. When you did those, uh, those were more well. It's like this sketch, right? It, it's a sketch. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I love my people there. Yeah. It's not about mountains. It's about wonderful people who are living here and here mm. and here. Yeah. 
But you did that, I think, didn't you say that once? You did that because you wanted to get to these yeah. kind of images, yeah. right? Yeah. I wanted to paint this over and over again yeah. to uh, be able to invent it. Because yeah. I yeah. know all the angles and geology and, and the situations, and then yeah. I can begin to lie <laughs> about it. So you collect enough, enough uh, knowledge, it becomes something uh, so-called new. No, but it's, but, but it's uh, uh, also about theological, uh, uh, about a theological approach to the uh, Nordic belief. So in this way, I'm very Catholic. <laughs> uh, I, I only yeah. want to celebrate um, Catholic approach, but I'm not painting as fast as Kremser Schmidt. <laughs> but, so th this is for uh, for the different uh, halls. What do you call it? Uh, Norse temples or Norse uh, god houses. If they can accept an um, anti uh, uh, modernist approach. And in, uh, on Iceland, they are uh, modernists in, a, in an extreme way. What, the people who the, the, say they are Norse the, yeah, or yeah. Uh, believe in Norse? The new temples are not traditional. Also, the new temples uh, in uh, Gudehof uh, in Sweden are not made in a traditional way. Mm. I know some priests, uh, I love them. They're extremely great persons grounded and everything's fine but they lost the energy because they wanted to have something like a religion and this goes completely wrong after the 1900s mm -hmm. so until the uh, 16 1700s in Austria you had all the Nordic beliefs collected in a church, oh. but uh, you, uh, it was a, a way of translation. It was not uh, Donar or Thor, oh, yeah. but it was a Roman uh, soldier with the same attributes. Uh -huh. uh, and in the church and <laughs> absolutely complete, oh, beautiful. Right. So, so they collected everything. They held the tradition. Yeah. But when uh, um, uh, educated or enlightened uh, uh, approach uh, came after the socialist revolution in France, everything went in, into a boring direction. Mm. They lost traditions. Mm. You can always... Uh, Talk, uh, uh, interpret uh, interpret uh, a tradition in another way when we're uh, taking the tradition in your arms you, you don't want to uh, lose the tradition yeah? mm. so you're taking it with you uh, but in the, in the 1800s they lost it mm. so you, one has to begin again I'm not uh, as uh, baroque as I was like to be, uh, but I will give something back right. for contemplation and energy and the most important thing, children. <laughs> there is no other goal in life. And you know it. Yes. <laughs> and then you have the symb symbolism of three. So it's the painting before they get children. Right. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And then there is one important thing uh, as they did it in Baroque times. Paintings with people have to be filled up with small children. Very important. Mm. And dogs. <laughs> children <laughs> and dogs. And uh, I would appreciate cats too. <laughs> so so where the children and dogs. Where are they going to fit now? Where are you going to no, fit? Not, not in this one, <laughs> but in the future there will be children and dogs around. Right, right, right. That is not a good painting without children and dogs. <laughs> Have a look at Tisha. Mm, mm. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> There's a child holding a big dog in a sled. <laughs> so, this is the future, children and dogs. Uh, you know that... Uh, Paint by Jodans in the National Museum. Ah. Uh, the woman with a big, big behind. <laughs> And she's standing there showing off. You know, I almost cracked up because I walked past it and then I noticed something I hadn't seen before. That little dog. <sighs> <laughs> it's like the, the dog knows what, uh, what the meaning of life is. You, know? <laughs> uh, you have to get it. Uh, a painting is not a movie on the screen at home. It's not like... Uh, Sorry that I mentioned these names, Netflix or mm. so. uh, oh, Disney Channel. Uh, the painting is not changing. And people think this is boring. Mm. <laughs> it is not. It's, uh, the painting is confronting yourself every day, every second, with the same and a quite different question. What are you doing out of a painting? You see, uh, a, a painter is painting some months or some years on a painting. And the one who is seeing the painting in an exhibition or in a museum spends statistically seen 1.7 seconds in front of a painting. Mm. This is not justice. When you're a musician, you compose for six months to some years for a composition which lasts at least some hours. So, the only justice for paintings is hang on the wall at the bias place, not in a museum, this is the wrong place for a painting. It's the worst place ever, a museum. I hate museums, you know it. You have to live with the painting. And after several years, maybe you get the meaning <laughs> of the little dog and the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for checking out this video from the School of Apelles. To watch the full video and access our premium library, go to caveofapellus.com slash subscribe and become a $10 patron. That's caveofapellus.com slash subscribe.